28th, we descended the stream about 15 miles through the dense forest, and at length came to a beautiful valley about 8 miles long and 3 or 4 wide, surrounded by dark and lofty mountains. The stream, after running through the center in a northwest direction, rushed down a tremendous canyon of basaltic rock, apparently just wide enough to admit its waters. The banks of the stream and the valley were low and skirted in many places with beautiful cottonwood groves. Here we found a few snake Indians, comprising six men, seven women, and eight or ten children, who were the only inhabitants of this lonely and secluded spot. They were all neatly clothed in dressed deer and sheepskins of the best quality, and seemed to be perfectly contented and happy. They were rather surprised at our approach, and retreated to heights where they might have a view of us without apprehending any danger. But having persuaded them of our pacific intentions, we then succeeded in getting them to encamp with us. Their personal property consisted of one old butcher knife, nearly worn to the back, two shattered old fuses, which had long since become useless for want of ammunition, a small stone pot, and about thirty dogs, on which they carried their skins, clothing, provisions, etc., on their hunting excursions. They were well armed, with bows and arrows pointed with obsidian. The bows were beautifully wrought from sheep, buffalo, and elk horns, secured with deer and elk sinews and ornamented with porcupine quills, and generally about three feet long. We obtained a large number of elk, deer, and sheepskins from them of the finest quality, and three large neatly dressed panther skins in return for awls, axes, kettles, tobacco, ammunition, etc. They would throw the skins at our feet and say, Give us whatever you please for them and we are satisfied. We can get plenty of skins, but we do not often see the Tabubos, or people of the sun. They said there had been a great many beaver on these branches of the stream, but they had killed nearly all of them, and being ignorant of the value of fur, had singed it off with fire in order to drip the meat more conveniently. They had seen some whites some years previous who had passed through the valley and left a horse behind, but he had died during the first winter. They are never at a loss for fire, which they produce by the friction of two pieces of wood, which are rubbed together with a quick and steady motion. One of them drew a map of the country around us on a white elk skin with a piece of charcoal, after which he explained the direction of the different passes, streams, etc. From then we discovered that it was about one day's travel in a southwest direction to the outlet or northern extremity of the Yellowstone Lake, but the route from his description, being difficult and beaver comparatively scarce, our leader gave out the idea of going to it this season, as our horses were much jaded and their feet badly worn. Our geographer also told us that this stream bed united with the Yellowstone after leaving this valley half a day's travel in a west direction. The river then ran a long distance through a tremendous cut in the mountain in the same direction and merged into a large plain the extent of which was beyond his geographical knowledge or conception. 30th, we stopped at this place and for my own part I almost wish I could spend the remainder of my days in a place like this, where happiness and contentment seem to reign in wild romantic splendor, surrounded by majestic battlements which seem to support the heavens and shut out all hostile intruders.